January 6th hearings are well underway where many of Trump's damaging actions are being revealed, leading many people to ask, will he be held legally responsible? All right, so I'm recording this video after we wrapped up the third Trump January 6th riot hearings. And already there's been so many bombshells about both January 6th and then what led up to that day. And the big question that many people are asking is, is there any chance Trump will be held legally responsible for trying to essentially plot to overturn the results of a free and fair election? And while it's so unlikely to imagine a president going to jail for something, it is a very serious thing we are all wondering. Because in any sane world, a president who tried to stay in power by getting his vice president to reject the lawful results of an election would have to have some sort of consequences because otherwise we're just inviting another leader to try to do that possibly more successfully in the future and we won't have a democracy when that time comes. Now, I just wanna say, I know that people who are on the right hear this type of language and instantly wanna turn it off. Oh, it's a crazy liberal going on about, oh, he's next gonna talk about fascism. But I really want you to hear me because I'm not someone, if you watch some of my show, who gets hyperbolic for no reason. I genuinely enjoy hearing out conservatives in my life. I wanna know how they come to their opinions, all those types of things, it means a lot to me. So I'm not just saying this because I'm on team blue and he's on team red and ah, oh, let's arrest him and oh, he was the biggest threat to democracy, blah, blah, blah. I'm saying this because it is very real. We've never had a president in the history of America who denied that peaceful transition of power and tried to do anything possible to stay president even when he lost an election. And so as you hear me say the phrase, Donald Trump is the greatest threat to American democracy right now, I mean that very literally. I'm not saying that because I hate Donald Trump. I'm saying that because when you look at the facts of January 6th and what led up to it, it is undeniable that Trump's goal, regardless of the facts that were presented to him, was to claim the election was stolen and thus have the justification to stay in power. So before we go any further into the possibility of Trump being held legally responsible for any of this, I just want to quickly summarize what has happened in the last three January 6th hearings because a lot has absolutely been revealed. So the first hearing, they kind of did a general layout. What are the points that we want you to have been clearly made for you by the end of these hearings? And then also started to dive into the specifics of how hectic and chaotic and destructive the actual day of January 6th was. Then the second day, they focused in on the fact that the allies around Trump knew that the lies he were telling were that lies and expressed that to Trump, but Trump kept on telling them nevertheless. And then the most recent hearing, the third January 6th hearing, was all about Mike Pence, how much he was under pressure by Trump and allies to try to do something that was completely unconstitutional, which was deny the results of the election and possibly recognize alternate slates of electors to pretend like Trump won and all this stuff that he was absolutely not constitutionally allowed to do, but Trump and company wanted him to do it to throw the election up in the air and give Trump a justification to stay in power. And my next video is going to be more specifically on Mike Pence, Trump's vitriol towards him and how respectable it is that Pence stood strong with all the problems we've had with Mike Pence in the past. He really did do what was right, stood strong, no matter how aggressively Trump went against him. And that's definitely something to be admired. So that was the third hearing, all about the Mike Pence angle and how because of him, we weren't thrown into that constitutional crisis and we had our democracy stay alive a little bit longer. Okay, so those are the hearings we've seen so far. Now let's jump into the possibility of Trump being arrested for a lot of the revelations that have come out during these hearings and a lot of them had already kind of come out beforehand. A former federal prosecutor who served for more than 24 years in the District of Columbia's U.S. Attorney's Office says Donald Trump could be arrested or indicted on just the evidence included in Monday's bombshell legal ruling by U.S. District Court Judge David O. Carter. Judge Carter's finding by preponderance of the evidence which says more likely than not that Trump committed felony offenses is a higher evidentiary standard than the one needed to arrest indict Trump for his crimes, which requires only probable cause writes Glenn, and then it goes on to describe that person. So this judge ruled that the evidence that is out about Trump's actions and trying to 
overturn the results of the 2020 election is higher than the threshold needed to charge him with felonies. Judge Carter on Monday wrote, based on the evidence, the court finds it more likely than not that President Trump corruptly attempted to obstruct the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021. In response, legal experts are calling his ruling striking, massive, monumental, and historic. So that is exactly what that is. That is definitely monumental, striking, and all those things. Because that judge is saying Trump more likely than not obstructed the joint session of Congress in such a manner that he would be able to be charged with felonies, would be able to be indicted. That is humongous. A former president possibly gonna be legally held accountable for actions he took while he was president is unprecedented. And setting aside the historic nature of a president being involved in something like this, when you really just look at it clearly, did Donald Trump obstruct a joint session of Congress? Absolutely, no doubt. He built up for months a case for why that joint session of Congress shouldn't be able to do their lawfully mandated activities and then riled up that crowd to try to go in there and stop them from doing what they're doing. But then separate from that, let's completely ignore the mob side of it because you could say, well, he didn't specifically call them, blah, blah, blah. Okay, just his pressure on Mike Pence should be enough. He was going so hard against Mike Pence, both publicly and privately, saying, you have to go in there and reject the lawfully certified electors who have went through the proper process through the states and instead either just say we're flipping it back to the states that doesn't count or recognize some other random electors who were not certified by the states lawfully and pretend that they're the rightful electors and thus make donald trump president that is a coup it wasn't a military coup and it wasn't a coup in the way we think about generally, but he was trying to get his vice president to reject the results of the lawful election and pretend that some other results had happened. I mean, don't y'all agree? Even if you're conservative, you can like small government, blah, 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 but won't you agree that that's Trump trying to stay in power unconstitutionally? The judge goes on, Dr. Eastman and President Trump launched a campaign to overturn Democratic election. Carter also wrote calling it an action unprecedented in American history. Their campaign was not confined to the ivory tower. It was a coup in search of a legal theory. The plan spurred violent attacks on the seat of our nation's government, led to the deaths of several law enforcement officers, and deepened public distrust in our political process. So what that district court judge is properly identifying is Trump had the outcome in his head that he wanted, and then he was going to scrape around for any possible reasoning to get there. So he pretended that, oh, the election was fraudulent, and now we have this new legal theory where you can result electors if you're the vice president and, and claim other ones are the proper electors and then put someone else in power and a whole made up set of actions that their government could take. All of those legal justifications didn't matter. As the judge wrote, a coup in search of a legal theory. So they had the coup that they wanted in mind, which was to keep Trump in power by any means possible. And then they came up with some weird, completely delusional legal theory that could justify it. And that type of plot by a president should absolutely lead to them being held accountable legally. Now, of course, I think the justice system should do what it does and should see if, based on our laws, that really is a felony. It looks like legal experts are saying it is. I'm not informed enough on the specifics of the law to know, but if it is, he should be held accountable. The reason that I'm so fired up about this is I think there's a good chance it'll be absolutely clear to everyone Trump committed crimes, but nothing will happen. That's what we see time and time again. People in power aren't held accountable when they do break the law. And if any time in American history, it is absolutely crucial that we hold a president accountable. It's whenever he's threatening our democracy at a deep, deep level. You have to make it clear to any future person, whether it's Trump again or someone else, that you cannot threaten our democracy. You cannot throw all of our history of peaceful transitions of power, accepting elections even if you lost and you're in power in the garbage. You can't just get rid of all that because you wanna stay in power. We have to make that so clear so that we don't have to go through this as a country again. I will say, if you were to ask me, I still think it's unlikely that Trump is significantly held accountable in the legal realm, but I'm, I'm hoping every single day. And I want you to hear it one more time, conservatives. This is not just because I don't like Trump. This is because I genuinely believe, and I want y'all to look into it. 
he put our democracy in a level of peril we haven't seen before. And just, if you're someone who thinks the election was stolen, please go with me on this train of thought. If you were looking at this from my perspective, okay, an election happens, regardless of who I was rooting for, you watch the election happen, and all of the networks, based on all of their ability to gather election data say Biden won. Of course, all of the major media networks, okay? So that happens and I'm watching and go, all right, looks like Biden won. But then you see the other side say, no, it was fraudulent. Okay, well, let's keep on. Where would you prove that an election was fraudulent? Where would you do that? The president who's in that election can't make the decision. Don't y'all agree? The vice president shouldn't be able to make that decision because he's also on the ballot. So it should be on the state level like we had it and then in the courts. And the states certified the electors that showed Biden won. So I'm watching as a third party and I see Biden wins, major media networks call it, all of the votes get counted, the actual state legislatures certify these counts, certify the electors. We're going through all the proper processes. Biden's win is getting moved along like all of the elections have in the past. And then the other side's still screaming, no, it was fraudulent. Okay, so where do you prove that after we're already see certifications happen. We're already seeing final counts coming out in Biden's favor. Where would you challenge those results? Well, that's what we have a judicial system for, right? That's why we have courts. That's why we have a legal system. So then the opposing party goes through the judicial system time and time again, 60 plus court cases don't find any merit to these claims. And thus Biden's win is even more robustly proven to be legitimate. Every single trusted independent group that has looked into this hasn't found any wide scale voter fraud. Individual anecdotes that have come out. Oh, look, this person came in with a suitcase. It was investigated. Oh no, that was completely, totally fine. That's exactly what they're supposed to do. They brought in a you know, box of ballots that they received from the place and now they're counting them. All of these had reasons. Oh, there's dead voters. No, actually these per people weren't dead that you said. This was, it's all looked into. None of it is found to be legitimate at all. So you can imagine, but please listen to me. <laughs> You can imagine as someone sitting in my seat, you're gonna go, okay, clearly, these people just wanted the same power. They were bummed out that they lost. And so then they went through this whole process to try to stay in power unlawfully and unconstitutionally. And if you wanna live in this weird world where the entire country is all in this big conspiracy to keep Trump out of power and all of the courts, even people that Trump appointed are also on the side of the Democrats for some reason, even though in their entire career they were not, makes no sense. And all of these countries are intervening in an election just cause they wanna get Trump out of power. Okay, live in that world, I don't know. There's no way if you're so in that line of thinking that I can bring you out of it. Honestly, I don't know how I could possibly get your mind out of that dumpster. If you can live in the conspiracy world where every single possible way you could have proved the election was stolen failed every single way, but you still believe it. I don't know what to do about that. I literally don't know what to do. That's why we have official processes. That's why we have a judicial system. That's why we have independent groups to look into elections like this. But every time it's sided with that was a free and fair election. So I don't know what to do with people who still believe these conspiracies. So then if you do adopt my sets of beliefs because you see, okay, clearly we had plenty of chances to prove the election was stolen. We didn't. We couldn't do it through any official capacity. I now believe it was a legitimate election. Then you can recognize how dangerous and destructive it is that Trump tried to overturn this election. We almost said goodnight to our somewhat functioning democracy for good. And for that, Donald Trump should absolutely be held legally responsible. I am so curious to hear what you guys have to say. Let me know in the comments if you think there's any chance Trump could be arrested for all of this, or if you think, no, he's not going to be held accountable.